Hi everyone. This is Veronica. Today our topic of discussion is about species in news. So let me tell you, I have already made earlier three parts of uh, this video, uh, this particular uh, series, where you will learn about various species which have been in news from the last one year or more. Because these kind of questions could be asked in your exam. For my video updates and queries, you can connect with me on Instagram and Facebook because I feel together we can make a difference. So now what is the relevance of this topic in your exams it will be covered in your mains paper one geographical features and their location objective level what is the name of species and at subjective level you should know why that species is in news so let's start with our first species that is thanatot heritis so now uh, why it is in news because scientists have actually found that the dinosaur fossil which is found in alberta and canada in 2010 it belongs to a new species of tyrannosaur so they have named it Thanatotherites, which means Reaper of Death. So talking about the species here, Tyrannosaurs were one of the largest meat-eating dinosaurs to have ever lived. Like they had very large, high skulls and the best known among them is the Tyrannosaurus rex. So Tyrannosaurus rex is the best known among them, which is celebrated in the Jurassic Park series also. Now, the 79 million year old fossil that the researchers have found is the oldest tyrannosaur known from northern North America. So, this uh, Thanatotheritis, it preyed on large plant-eating dinosaurs such as the horned Xenoceratops and the dome-headed other dinosaurs. So, the research suggests that the tyrannosaurs did not have one general body type, rather different tyrannosaur species evolved distinct body sizes skull forms and other physical features so the fossil specimen is important to understand the late cretaceous period which is a period when tyrannosaurs actually roamed on this earth so now uh, if you want to uh, study for what how it will help researchers because it will help them to know about cretaceous spirits also now moving to our next species that is flame-throated bulbul so why it is in news because the flame-throated bulbul also called as ruby gula was chosen as the mascot of the 36th national games to be held in goa it is the state bird of goa also if you look at the iucn status it is least concerned so this flame-throated bulbul it is endemic to the southern india southern peninsular india where it is locally distributed in like southern uh, southern andhra pradesh eastern karnataka Goa, Odisha, Eastern Kerala and Northern Tamil Nadu. So it prefers habitats like which are very rocky, scrub covered hills, mostly that are found in the Eastern Ghats and then Central, uh, Central Peninsular India. But also in some places in the Western Ghats also we have uh, sighted this uh, bird. So it is a Schedule 4 bird under Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Now coming to the next species that is Natrielba swarupe. Now, why it is in news? Because scientists at the National Center for Microbial Resource, National Center for Cell Science, it is in Pune, they have reported about it. It is basically a microorganism, an old uh, archaeon, but new because it is found recently. So, this is a kind of microorganism which they have discovered in Sambar Salt Lake in Rajasthan. So why they have named it Natrialba Swarupe because this new archaeon has been named Natrialba after Dr. Renu Swarup who is Secretary Department of Biotechnology for her initiative in supporting microbial diversity studies in the country. Now if we would like to talk about archaea, this is a singular is archaeon. This is a very primitive old group, ancient group of microorganisms that thrive in extreme habitats. If you look at their habitats they actually live in very extreme hab habitats where there is extreme hot uh, hot temperature or extreme cold for example hot springs cold deserts and hyper saline uh, saline lakes where the concentration of salt is so much so these slow growing organisms are also present in the human gut so in our digestive tract they have a role so they have a potential uh, relationship with the 
with maintaining human health also so they are on also known for producing antimicrobial molecules and antioxidant activities so which is good for human beings with application in eco friendly wastewater treatment so we have lot of wastewater biotechnological uh, methods where we use these microorganisms so rk are extremely difficult to culture if you want to culture them in lab it is very difficult due to the challenges in providing natural conditions in a laboratory setting so they do not sur survive in the laboratory setting they need the natural settings so as rk is relatively very poorly studied because we cannot culture them in the lab very little is known about how rk behave in our human body as i told you they are found in the human gut so the organism has potential gene clusters that helps maintain the metabolism of the rk to survive in the extreme harsh condition so if we talk about the sambar lake sambar lake has been poorly studied for microbial ecology studies because with the salt production of 0.2 million tons per annum it is also a hyper saline ecosystem which provides an opportunity for microbial ecologists to understand organisms that thrive in such concept now we'll move on to our next that is the steppe eagle so what is uh, why this eagle is in news because it is a lone endangered steppe eagle aquila nepalensis it has been sighted recently by a group of bird watchers so bird watchers are the people who try to study about the birds and especially the migratory birds so they have sighted it in a paddy field near vijayawada so talking about this uh, steppe eagle this is a migratory raptor which has undergone extremely rapid population decline within all its range so it breeds in russia kazakhstan mongolia during the winter season so the steppe eagle is the second largest migratory eagle species in india if you look at the iucn status uh, of this uh, bird eagle it is the least concern to endangered initially it was least concern but now it has moved to endangered now we will move on to our next discussion is about pangolins so i have already made a separate video on pangolins if you'll search you'll get to know about it uh, now what has happened madhya pradesh forest department has radio tagged an indian pangolin for the first time the iucn status is endangered okay now see india is actually home to two species of this pangolin so pangolin is a mammal so there is indian pangolin there is chinese pangolin and it is this chinese pangolin is found in northeastern india and the indian pangolin is distributed in other parts of countries also as well as in sri lanka bangladesh pakistan now both these species are protected and are listed under the schedule 1 part 1 of the wildlife protection act 1972 now commonly it is known as uh, scaly ant eaters it is toothless animal which is very unique and a result of million uh, millions of years of evolution so pangolins evolved scales on their body as a means of protection when threatened by big carnivores like lions or tigers they usually curl into a ball so they become like a ball and their scales defend them against dental attacks of these predators so now talking about radio tagging which has been done by the madhya pradesh government so radio tagging aims to know its ecology and develop an effective conservation plan for it right because this is the most most trafficked mammal in the world so uh, this radio tagging is part of joint project by department of non profit the wildlife conservation trust and also the in, it involves species monitoring part from other activities so now if you somebody ask you why we need to protect pangolins because pangolins are currently the most trafficked wildlife species in the world and these scales has now become the main cause the scales you can see on this picture they have actually become the main cause of the pangolins disappearance so the scales are high in demand in china where they are usual uh, used in traditional chinese medicine and pangolin meat is also in high demand in china and southeast asia Co uh, consequently pangolins have seen a rapid reduction in population globally the projected population declines uh, the range if you see is from 50% to 80% across the genus so that is why we need conservation for them now we'll move to next species that is cena spectabilis 
so now what is this this is basically an invasive species so if we talk about what are invasive species they are they do not belong to a particular area but when they are introduced to a new area they harm the native species because they take up they grow very fast they do not let uh, nutrients escape so they are harmful for the native species somehow for their survival so now the kerala forest department is planning to adopt steps to arrest the growth of the invasive plant so the senna spectabilis is invasive plant and now the forest department wants to arrest its growth especially senna spectabilis in the forest areas of nilgiri biosphere reserve nbr now talking about senna spectabilis uh, species it was planted as avenue trees in wayanad now the wayal ecosystem that is marshy land of the forest area now has this plant in large numbers because it grows very fast the spread is posing a major threat actually to the forest areas of the reserve which owe to its quick growth now the tree species was found nearly 10 square kilometer area of 344.44 square kilometer century around 5 years ago now this plant has started to invade the adjacent bandipur and nagarhol tiger reserves in karnataka and madumalai tiger reserve in tamil nadu now it had invaded to more than 50 square kilometer so it started from 10 square kilometer now 50 square kilometer of the century of wayanad so the recent study of ferns nature conservation society recorded the presence of plant in 78.91 square kilometers from 10 square kilometer to 50 to 78.91 square kilometer area of the century it has actually occupied so that is why now the government is worried because it is harming the native ecosystem of the area if you look at the impact like what is the impact of such growth so an adult trees of this plant grows up to 15 to 20 meters in short period of time and every year distributes thousands of seeds after gregarious flowering so the thick foliage arrests the growth of other indigenous tree and the grass species and it causes food shortage for the wildlife population especially the herbivores so moreover wildlife will not feed on the leaf of the trees it is not palatable for them so the alio chemicals which is produced by this plant it adversely affect the germination and growth of the native species now we'll come to the next plant that uh, next uh, species that is bar headed goose so uh, you can look at its picture also so this goose is a rare goose species which was sighted in wetlands in puncha in kerala so iucn conservation status is least concern the bar headed geese that is anser indicus is found in central china also and in mongolia they breed there so they start migration to indian subcontinent during the winter and they stay here till the end of the season and after the end of the season they return to their homes so to return to their homes they cross all the big huge himalayan ranges so their migration has been a fascination for bird watchers as they cross the himalayas on one of the most high altitude migrations in the world so you should remember about this species this is very important next species to be discussed is caterpillar fungus as you can see uh, in the picture also now trade in collection of himalayan gold caterpillar fungus is known as himalayan gold has become extremely popular in recent times so this fungus is a fungal parasite basically of larva caterpillars that belongs to the ghost moth so it is endemic to the tibetan plateau including the adjoining high himalayas also so locally also it is found in uh, india tibet bhutan china nepal so in indian himalayas the species has been documented in the region of alpine meadows of protected area such as there is nanda devi a uh, biosphere reserve escort wildlife sanctuary like that if we talk about the uses of this caterpillar fungus so for centuries this caterpillar fungus has uh, seemingly been used in traditional tibetan and chinese medicine as tonic okay as a therapeutic medicine for lung liver kidney so uh, in recent time the species has been widely traded as an aphrodisiac and a powerful tonic so there are also reports that caterpillar fungus possesses a range of more specific therapeutic uh, properties like action against asthma bronchial inflammation renal complaints can be cured if you have kidney problems irregular men menstruation could be cured 
like women are suffering from pcod so stimulation of the immune system also it helps in lot so talking about its harvesting uh, harvesting of caterpillar fungus starts at the beginning of may and it lasts till end of the june so this collection period however depends on factors such as weather snow cover and other factors so there is lot of opportunity and challenges for the people like the villagers who harvest caterpillar fungus in the nanda devi biosphere reserve and escort landscape they belong to economically very margin com- uh, marginal communities like shepherds porters and traders so the income derived through the collection and trade of this precious fungus has led led to their enhanced empowerment of rural dwellers which are living who were earlier living in extremely remote uh, mountain pockets in poverty so it is helping them and ultimately increasing trade induced over harvesting so that is the problem right now over harvesting which seems almost undoubtedly responsible for the declining population of the caterpillar fungus so if we talk about the way forward here so rampant exploitation and implementation of scientific uh, scientifically sustainable harvesting should be regulated here and the studies conducted in this regard note that there is a clear need of strengthening the policy measures so that policies should come in a way to manage the fungus sustainably and assimilating features of conservation livelihood security and good governance as well so this is all about today's lecture we have discussed about various species which have been in the news uh, so if you have any queries you can contact me on the social media and if you are looking for the pdf it would you will find it on my telegram channel that is t.me Veronica underscore O. Thank you.